Uh, what up what up guys it's your boy Q and what we are going to talk about today is how to take pictures out of a helicopter all right guys before I jump into it, uh, I'm using a new setup today for my video. Tell me what you guys think. Um, I'm using the RX-0 Mark II along with the mic and the new flip screen that ha has on it. Tell me what you guys think of the audio and the video quality, comment below. So I'm sure that you have some questions about gear uh, in regards to camera and lenses and what are my favorite or what are the best options or combos for you to use. But before we do that, let's really understand something. Um, you are going to be in a helicopter roughly around 5,000 feet in the air and you're probably going to go to speeds of 100 to 200 miles an hour maybe faster depending who your pilot is so you have to truly understand uh, those conditions next is your perspective right what kind of perspective do you want are you looking for the uh, shots where you look behind and look at the helicopter uh, or are you looking for full landscape shots are you looking for you know the nose down shots are you looking for uh, a really cropped in detailed shot those are some things that you have to really understand are the perspectives of what you want to shoot in addition to some of those perspectives you guys have to understand the day of time that you're going to be shooting is it going to be daytime is it going to be golden hour is it going to be nighttime if it's going to be nighttime you're going to need a faster lens something around 1.4 all right, so let's just talk about the gear. My favorite camera and lens combo is the A7, Sony A7R 3 with the 16 to 35 2.8. The reason why I like this lens is you can get really, really wide and you can get a really cool tail shot with the city in the background at 16 millimeters. Um, you can also do a lot of the foot selfies that people like to do when they just dangle their feet out and you can get your feet, your shoes, and the entire uh, background or, or the city. So that's why I like to shoot at 16. If you're flying during the daytime, you can uh, shoot at F4, that's perfectly fine. Also, if you just keep in mind that this perspective, if you want the shoe selfie in focus or the shoes in focus, and you also want the city in focus, you're gonna have to shoot like at like F11 or even higher than that, just depending on how wide and how long or short your legs are. Um, if you shoot at nighttime, then that's not going to matter as, as much because uh, it's going to be really, really hard to shoot at F11 or F22 in some of these really, really dark locations. Um, one thing that you have to keep in mind is how dark some of these locations are and where you're going to be. One tip for some of these really dark locations you have to understand is the city and what it's surrounded by you might think vegas is really really bright and yes it is really bright in the center but all the surrounding areas you're not going to get the ambient light because it's essentially surrounded by mountains so it's really really dark right there um and also take in consideration the the moon phase so if you're flying during a full moon you're gonna get that really beautiful light shining from the moon if you fly during a new moon you're not gonna get anything so everything will be kind of like pitch black um, and it's gonna be a little bit harder to shoot you're not gonna get those nice blues in the sky unless you fly during like blue hour or something so depending on what helicopter what flight you're taking or what company that you're using they may only allow one camera so it's gonna be up to you um, you know what lens you want to bring with you however if you are flying with a company that allows you to bring more than one camera i highly suggest a 7 to 200 so you can get some really really close up and detail shots of the city or of whatever that you are shooting that day now if you want an in-between lens the in-between lens that you can use is a 24 to 70 uh that's a great focal point you can it's it's still wide enough to kind of shoot the back of the helicopter and still wide enough to shoot uh the shoe selfie uh, but it's just not a 16 millimeter 24 to 70 is a, a really great all-purpose lens and you can get just about everything that you want from the 24 to 70 so it just depends on your shooting style and what you want to shoot and what kind of perspectives that you want to capture all right guys let's talk about some settings so the first setting I want to talk to you guys is, is about shutter speed uh, one thing that you have to keep in mind is I know I keep talking about this, but you're moving really fast in a helicopter. So there's two ways that you can shoot. You can shoot with the camera inside of the helicopter or outside. Well, if you, if you want to shoot with 
the camera inside or outside of the helicopter there's gonna be two different settings if you're shooting outside remember the winds can be hitting your camera you're gonna be jerking around like this so you want to be at least one over 500 um, at least one over 500 or higher um, if you're shooting inside then you have a little bit more control the wind is not gonna be hitting you as much so one over uh, 250 is good I've shot like one over 125 it just really depends how sturdy sturdy and how uh, the wind conditions are so the wind plays a huge factor the speed of the helicopter plays a huge factor as well so just keep that in mind if it's during the daytime uh, you can just shoot super super fast uh, 1 over 2000 um, anything around that would be great for you alright so now let's talk about aperture so this gets kinda tricky as well because there's several uh, shots and perspectives that you can get if you're doing the, the shoe self selfie and you only want to take pictures of your shoes and you want the uh, background blurry you're gonna have to do at least f4 or faster uh, 1.4 2.8 anywhere around that range you can get a really nice uh, depth of field now if you're at if you're doing this during like golden hour or at nighttime it gets a little bit trickier because now you have to worry about your lighting conditions um, if you still want that look so and then you also have to keep in mind uh, if you're looking back and you're shooting the helicopter you're shooting the end of the helicopter are you focusing on just the tail end and you just want that in focus with uh, the background and everything blurred then you have to shoot at a faster speed um, and now if you want everything in focus then you can shoot at a higher aperture uh, usually the higher aperture for those type of shots is what you want to shoot at unless you just want just a blurry background all right, so the last thing I want to talk to you about is ISO. If it's during the daytime, it probably doesn't matter as much. You can probably just shoot it in auto ISO. If it's the nighttime, it gets a little bit trickier because it depends on how much noise you can withstand. Um, since I think I'm a fairly good editor, I've shot as high as 10,000 ISO at F4. Uh, when I was in San Francisco, those were the only options I had. I had a 16-35 F4 lens and my A7R2. I'm comfortable with editing around 10,000 ISO. Now there are people that may not be as good editors or they just don't want any grain or any noise in their shots. So they want to shoot at 2,000 um, or 3000, 3200 or whatever. So it just depends on your settings and how much noise you want. Now, if you're shooting at nighttime, I highly recommend uh, F1.4, roughly around 3000 ISO in a shutter speed of one over 250. Um, keep in mind that a, a new moon or a full moon also uh, comes into play so essentially you have to kind of play by ear and understand your conditions hopefully that's some good information for you guys um, if you like this video go ahead and click subscribe and like the like button for this video um, until then see you guys next time